we're back. Yes, baby, we are back. First of all, we hope that everybody's okay, that all your family and friends are fine and that... We're fine, everything is fine, and we're not doing a video because of this. <laughs> Nobody okay. needs to say the word. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube doesn't like it. Well, whatever. <laughs> um, we're back because we're gonna build something else. Yes, and we want you to join us again. Building something big, hopefully. Yes. Who knows? Basically, since the very, 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 very beginning all of, of all this, yeah. we wanted to create our own products. Mm -hmm. And that's why we came here to Spain, and that's why we started everything. And we haven't yet. Yeah. Why? Because a bunch of reasons. First of all, money doesn't fall from the sky, from yeah. in the shape of rain. So clients was the... Big most, focus in the beginning, yeah. Yeah, and it was a way to get funded, to get money, to keep things rolling, to pay the rent and all those things. Yeah. And the second reason was because we didn't find the idea, the one. And that was not that much as the idea in the sense that, oh my God, this one is going to go big. But more like a pragmatic approach to that. Being, we need an idea that we can do. We need an idea that is not too big. Um, so that we can do it on our own, mostly. Some outside input is okay, but a lot is problematic. Um, and we need something that we actually are passionate about. Yes. And honestly, I think we hit the jackpot. We love food. It's about food. The new idea is called the Burnometer. And you can hear the burn, no, meter. The first job of this device is making sure you don't burn stuff. Specifically, burn stuff in your pan. We are going to make a pan thermometer that measures the surface temperature of your pan and potentially also some other secret sauce stuff. And that's so why it's a smart thermometer as well. For your pan. Yes. Weirdly, this doesn't exist yet. Yeah, we were surprised because you've, you have a lot of thermometers to put inside the meat. Like you take it and stab it and put but it in the oven. I'm quite capable of cooking a piece of meat completely burnt with the thermometer <laughs> saying it's perfect. Yeah, because it doesn't know the temperature of the outside, only the inside. Yeah. And you can't stick a thermometer into everything. And no, I, I don't think a gamba is going to be happy when you stick a thermometer inside. No. Maybe we should make a picture of that just to, 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 to show. No, we will see. Any point. Mm, any, I will contact them. <laughs> and anyhow, the thing is that also being realistic, the way we cook more often is with pans or a skillet or woks. The oven, yes, a lot of people cook quite often with the oven, but I think pan is the, the most common thing. Yeah, so it's a thermometer for your pan that will do a number of things. First of all, it will warn you when something is going to burn. Not if it's burning, if it's going to burn, and it's going to be a bit like a car going backwards, like beep, 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 Or like the game of Overcooked. Overcooked. Which is a game that we love playing and actually maybe part of the idea came because of it in the back of our heads. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> but this is a clip maybe of what we have in mind in terms of burning warning. Yeah. And the second thing it will do is give you that temperature. You might think that just giving you that extra piece of information, who cares? But with a little bit of prototype that we've already made and done tests on, because this is not something that we... We just had the idea and we're starting. Um, with a little bit of test that we've already done, once I stopped using it, I missed it. And it's the difference was big. Yep. I cooked better with it just by knowing that number. And then the last thing that it will do, and these will be different versions potentially, but all that kind of stuff is something that we still need to figure out, is it will help you bake meat perfectly without needing to insert anything into it. And also veggies for you vegetarians and vegans, potentially. <laughs> Stretch goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that brings us to how are we going to do this. Um, yeah, and you're forgetting a very important part. Preventing burnings also makes you not burn your house. You will be surprised with the amount of fires that are caused because of pans being left unattended. The statistics, statistics we found range between 40 and 60% of um, house fires are caused in the kitchen and there between 50 and 70% are caused by pans, so something like 25% so this is, not is caused by pans 
And the most common reason for pans to cause a house fire is because they are left unattended. So a warning system that makes sure that you don't leave your pan unattended or at least don't let it get too hot could be incredibly valuable. And you're not counting with burning the oil, which is bad for you, burning the food, which is bad for you, burning the plastic of the pans, the teflon of the pans, which is also bad for your health. Yeah, it's really easy to fuck up and we're all busy. I mean, we have all kinds of distractions from phones to dogs to whatever. To, I'm, I'm sure you can think of a few. And I, when we asked around, it's very, very common for people to have burned something quite recently, like less than a month ago. Yes. Like most people were less than a month. Yes. So, and mostly the question was how burned? Like a little bit toasted or on fire? When people ask, did you mean on fire? That's also <laughs> worrying. <laughs> yeah. So, what is the plan? One more thing. <laughs> Why doesn't this exist? Um, because we've had a bunch of. Once we really got into this, we, we really started asking ourselves why doesn't this exist? And it turns out that, well, pans get hot. Newsflash. Um, <laughs> the thing is that it's really hard to make something that can resist that kind of heat and can resist it properly. But we think we've got it figured out. The thing is that most of you will say, but you have the thermometers that go in the meat in the oven that's also really hot. Inside the meat is not that hot. No, it goes up to 85 degrees and for that you can easily design. Okay. And it, it, the problem comes that a pan can actually go to like 300 degree, degrees Celsius and we're kind of designing for that spot. Theoretically you shouldn't go there because most oils are very much burned by then. Yeah. But we are designing for 300 degrees Celsius. Um, and that is that is difficult. Um, and secondly, you need something in your pan that is non-intrusive and that is somehow measuring the surface temperature properly. And also that is not that easy. So we think it's just, it's an engineering problem, why it doesn't exist. But once it exists, it could be really handy for people if it is non-intrusive enough. And we think we can manage that. We, I believe in it. I mean, the prototype see. was working. Yeah. And the plan, to make this reality is launching a Kickstarter. Yes. Kickstarter, for those that maybe you don't know it, is a crowdfunding campaign. Uh, the way it works is that you somewhat back a project. It's not exactly like a pre-order, but it's close enough. Yeah. And the most important thing is that the creators set a goal, like, okay, we want to hit this amount of money in terms of target. and. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. The backers don't pay, the person that creates it doesn't get any money. But if it goes through and it can surpass the goal, then the transaction is done and the backers pay. And the creator needs to deliver the product within a certain amount of time that they have Agreed set, upon. Yep. kind of. And the most important thing about that is that you get a guarantee that there is enough people wanting the product for it to be worth it to invest in it so that we know enough people want this and the people that buy it don't buy something that won't be produced and won't be supported long term yeah so it's also handy for proving potential investors that something is a yeah. good idea it's a good step in between the 100 and the zero it's not that you're gonna start selling in the courting less or somewhere but it's slowly... Yeah. It's, it's a first step. Yeah. And it's a first step that is more of a clear yes or no than anything else. So that's the plan. And of course, we would like your help with that, if possible. Um, we would like you, if you're excited or if you know somebody that could use this, to start spreading the word that this is going to exist and this is something that uh, we are working on. If you just want to share the story, that's also already really nice. We are starting our Facebook page, Instagram page, Twitter account, website. Website. We will keep posting videos like this weekly to keep yes. you updated if you want to have some fun. And we would love you if you can share it with your family, friends. Everybody's welcome. Of course, if you have somebody that loves cooking, this is for them. If you have somebody that doesn't know how to cook, this is also for them, maybe. And, and right now, Nothing is set in stone, stone yet. That's why we need you. We need you to tell us why you would use it, why you wouldn't use it, 
how much it could cost, all those type of things, incredibly useful at this stage because that will help us make a better product. And we want to make a product that people will actually use and keep using and love. Yep. For example, one friend of us pointed out that making caramel is quite difficult because it works in very specific temperatures that you can't measure that easily. All those kind of things are quite handy in terms of feedback. And yep. of course, other things. If you want to tell us how did you burn your last steak and you cried, sure. <laughs> actually, Stories about how you burn things, please send those. Maybe we should read them next time. Yeah, or, or maybe not you, but your friend. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, so of course, another way that it can help us is when we launch the Kickstarter, pack us, be one of the backers, that is super important in the first hours. Because Kickstarter doesn't bring its own audience. So what happens is that if you don't get a large portion of your goal within the first hours and days, then Kickstarter doesn't care and you get to the bottom of the pile. And the only way to really make a project work is to get a big boost in the beginning. And that's what we're working on now. We're building an audience, we're checking if uh, people are actually excited about this. That was last week and we actually got some very encouraging results from the first ads that we've done. Yeah, um, we, yeah. we got some clicks, we even got some subscribers to the newsletter which is great. Especially without optimizing. Um, so yeah, we, we think this thing is gonna work and we really would be excited if you guys can join us for the ride. So now you know, follow, spread, and let's cook. Yep, see you next week. See ya. <laughs>